Okay, I just hit start recording, and I just started the timer, like, at the message where it says ciao. Like, after Mario 64's already started, so no intro, yeah. intro cutscene timer. Yeah. Alright. Well, this is gonna be a completely nonsense run. Oh, right, I'm not live streaming. Let me bring that up. You're looking at this window now because <laughs> I didn't want to find the real one. All right, welcome anybody that's actually that's actually watching this video. Uh, this is Wither Witherman's guide to Mario 64 16 star and what you should do for your very first run. As I stated in the previous video, oh god damn it, don't do that. But as I stated in the previous video. This, uh, the, the game won't look this good for you, probably. If you're doing everything right, it should. Oh, I say everything right. You're welcome to play on the PC port as well if you're just starting out. But if you do want us to seriously submit times, uh, the only options are listed on speedrun.com. You know, I'm gonna restart. I'm gonna... <laughs> that was funny. That was really funny. I'm gonna restart. That was, that was really funny. It's just like... It almost sounded like, no, don't use this guide. I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he I mean, like. the bomb trick, but he has to change. <laughs> Did that ruin his whole flow? I don't even care that I missed Bomb Clip. The thing is. I need to, like, get everything wrong, because this is supposed to be, like, POV. It's your first run ever. And I went for Bomb Clip. I, I should have even went for Bomb Clip. No, it's fine. Because you did the right thing, you fucked up Bomb Club. <laughs> <laughs> no, shut up. Okay, so I'm just gonna start recording. Oh, wait, no, I'm still recording. Whatever. Uh, three, two, one. Oh, they're gonna. No one's gonna notice. I don't have. I'm have missing health. No one's gonna notice the big fat zero on the screen. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Weatherman's 16 star tutorial for brand new players. I'm just really good at MIPS clip. Don't mind this. I'm not re-recording the first start. So, what you're gonna want to do when you first start playing is you kind of have to go to Babon Battlefield. This tutorial is going to assume you've barely played Mario 64, and assuming this is your first time playing the 16 star. And just the PC port of Mario 64 looks really, really cool. So don't mind that. If you're playing on Nintendo Switch Online or pre emulating both are perfectly fine. But the only star we're going to go for in, in 16 star in the Bomb Battlefield is going to be the Chain Shot star. While there is a more advanced technique called Bomb Clip for this start, you don't really have to go for it until you start to get a much better time. Like, once you start to get under, like, sub 45 minutes, I would say Bomb Clip might be something you want to look at. But until you can consistently nail a lot of the later stars, the time save isn't really worth it. So I am joined today by two co-hosts, uh, not of their own volition, but I have Valor, I believe that's how you pronounce your name. That's me. That is correct. And I also have Imagination Station, who is currently driving in their car. That is so that's called Todd. Both of their audios are very low and they might not be audible, but just in case you hear them, they are there. It's a good thing you can't hear <laughs> So after you get the first star in the bomb battlefield, you want to immediately run over to Wilm's Fortress. This is where the, a lot of the fastest stars in the game are, and you can kind of ch pick and choose which ones you actually want to do here. When you're first starting out with 16 star, I would highly recommend learning this one, which is uh, Shoot Into the Wild Blue. It is by far the easiest star in the game. But you'll probably hear me say that a lot because a lot of the stars in 16 star are run to an area and wall kick. And the reason we don't do any of the stars in order is because it's just kind of faster to get the fast ones out of the way. Oh, I should explain this. So for this right here, there's a couple ways you can get up, but this wall is very important. Every time you spawn, you're going to want to jump off that tree. I'm gonna go into first-person camera. Right where you spawn, there's a tree. You can see the leaves of it right there. 
For almost, actually, literally every star in Womp's Fortress, it is faster to climb to almost the top of the tree, have Mario's back face the water, and then jump up here to get up to the top. From this arrow, you can line up a triple jump. And right as soon as you hit the wall, if you press your dive button, which will be like your punch button, you'll get a little bit of extra height and land on this floating platform. From here, you have a couple different ways you can go. You can try and do the triple jump for Owlus to land inside that cage, but that is far outside the skill level. Far outside the skill level for uh, what we're doing in this tutorial. What you're wanna, gonna wanna learn this jump for is mainly to get to Womp King and then to get to the top of the tower when you come back. Womp King is a very easy fight. You can always just ground him right through him. So there's no real risk at all in this fight. You can still make mistakes, I'm prone to, but Womp King's a very easy boss. You can also line up Womp King to seamlessly grab the star if you kill him in the right angle. That's true. If you can look at the textures on the ground and you memorize where the star is at, you can kill Womp King right on top of where the star spawns and always grab the star, like, immediately. So we're gonna grab the tree, and then this is, as far as low level goes, the most, I would say probably the most difficult star in the game. So you want to run across this bridge, you want to zoom out, make sure your camera is centered on this bridge right here, then you want to run and grab this wall right here. To make absolutely certain that we can hit cannonless, which is what we're setting up right now, you want to jump, and then while you're in the air, tap left. Eventually your foot will start to uh, like be repelled by this plank, then immediately hold down. We'll grab the, go grab the ledge here, tap up to stand right up, crouch, which is, uh, for me it's left trigger, for you it's probably like Z or ZL, depending on if you're on uh, Nintendo Switch Online or if you're on an emulator. Then you want to back click, hold no directions, as soon as you land, you're going to want to punch, turn your camera to the left twice, hold down slowly, very very slowly hold down so that you can walk to the lead blip here. Then you want to tap right on your camera stick, tap left on your camera stick, then you want to tap up, and then immediately while you're still in the middle of climbing up to the bridge, so like while Mario is rising up and you have no control over him, hold sharply down and then just keep holding down. If you do it right, you will hit cannonless. Sometimes it takes a couple of attempts, and if you if you mess up like I did just there, just go ahead and retry the setup. Mario did a little walk there. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it messes you up. There we go. You get all that uh, because I sure did it. Go back and rewatch it to make sure you got it memorized. Yeah, it is it is important to get it memorized, but sometimes it just doesn't work. But that's very rare. If it doesn't work, that's okay. It, it might not the first couple times you try it, you might make a few mistakes just with how intricate the setup is. But trust me, this setup becomes second nature. I didn't even have to read anything for that. I, and I have a very, very terrible memory. I just kind of get it now. Eventually, it bakes into your muscle memory and you just kind of start doing it. Which is a great feeling when it starts to happen. I'm gonna take the tree. I'm gonna take the tree again. Use some long jumps to quickly get up this, and then we're gonna set up our triple jump. Well, I messed up the triple jump, so we're gonna do the backup, which is a not like that. But you're gonna want to do a side flip right onto this wall, and then immediately jump dive like you were doing for the triple jump. Now from here, you can grab onto the bottom thing, whatever the fuck these things are, of top of the tower, then do a side flip, and you can land right on this platform. That side flip is a little tricky to land, so you might want to try and get a ledge grab on it, but either way, that star is very simple. So now we only have one star left, and I will showcase three different ways to go for it. I will fail one of these ways, because I'm not good enough, but I'll show you the two main ways that this star is done. So we're going to try the more fun way first. If you fall off the side flip here. Man. Just one of those Mario days. So we're going to set up our side flip and head up here. And now for Owlis, 
There's two ways to do Owlless, and then otherwise you'll just take the Owl. I'll show you how to take the Owl and get it consistent every time, and then I'll show you two different ways to do Owlless. So, there are much better Owlless setup guides than this. You won't really need to practice this way of doing it just yet. This is for people beyond my skill level. But basically you're going to want to set up a triple jump right on the edge of this platform. And then you're going to want to do an instant wall kick, and then as soon as you land the wall kick, you'll be able to hold inward, like hold the stick towards the star, and you'll just barely clip within the cage. There are much better guides for landing that variant of Atlas, but I will show you the variant that I know how to do, which is climbing atop the tower. This is why we side flip. Honestly, it felt like you got pretty close with that owl. Yeah, that was a pretty okay owlless attempt, but from the top of the tower, you can actually line up with the with the little pointy bit right here, and then just long jump. Here we go! You'll either land right on top of the star or skip into the cage like I did. You just hold forward on your long jump to where Mario is heading, and you will. Almost always, if you line it up correctly, with that little pointy bit on the tower, you almost always land inside the cage. Now I'll show just doing the owl. So you just go to the top of the tree, mash through the text boxes that show up, hold the A button upon grabbing the owl, which just jump underneath his shadow. And then he's always going to be slightly to the right, so head over to the star and then just ground pound as soon as you're on top of it. I have practiced the owl the most of all three strategies, so I'm very consistent at it, and it's pretty fast for me. But I guarantee you, at, at like top level play, like optimal Mario, Owlus, both variants are a little bit faster than just taking the owl. That is a crazy moment. Anyway, so now we have six stars, which means we are two away from being done with the middle floor of the castle. So next we're going to head over to Cool Cool Mountain. We will not be heading over to Jolly Roger Bay, I think is the name of that water stage. If it's not a 16 star, I don't know. So Cool Cool Mountain I'm has two... Sure right. yeah, I think I am too, but I'm not sure. Cool Cool Hello. Mountain has... Oh, I just need to notice my timer is a little bit off. Cool Cool Mountain has two extremely fast stars that are both very satisfying. So we're going to jump right up here. I'm going to turn this down a little bit, too. Alright. There you go. Just grab the Bengvy Penguin, and then this blue wall here, you line up with it, and then there's this tiny wall underneath. You slide, and then you hold forward upon reaching this slide, and then you butt bounce right over to the Mama Penguin. That is that entire star. And it is so much easier to do it this way than doing it in, like casual Mario 64. The fun thing about running this game is that half the stars are just easier when you know how to do them right. Now we move on to... This is the star that probably kills my runs the most, but that's because I'm bad at it. So you, what you want to do is... Whenever you're in the air, Mario loses quite a bit of air control, unless he kicks. So once he kicks, he gets a really... Oh, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> once Mario see, performs... My run Mamma mia. Once Mario performs an air kick, he's able to go backwards quite far. Much further than he would be able to if he hadn't. So what you can do is from the top of the mountain here, you can set up an air kick. So, a lot of runners will jump straight from the top, but I like to take it a little bit easier, and that's why I die. Anyway, Mama mia. if you notice, air kicking will also slow you down in place. And the way that you do an air kick is by holding neutral on the stick. So you want to hold neutral on the stick, and then just press the kick button. Then press R twice to reset your camera. You can land on any part of this bottom platform here after you do your air kick. And then you just do the regular star, which is uh, following in 
this pathway. Something else you might not know that will come in handy if you, is if you hold no direction and hold Z, which is your uh, crouch button after performing a long jump, Mario will just crouch right in place where he lands and he will lose all traction. Here we go! Alright, so we have eight stars, which means now we are done with the first floor of the castle. Congrats, you made it halfway. This is a little under, I would say, halfway of 16 star, because this is about 19, 19 levels we do. This is this is the first uh, this is the first no star level we do, which is Bowser one. Immediately as soon as you land, you're gonna land. You want to tap twice on the camera stick to the left to get centered uh, forward. As you get better at the game, this level becomes more imposing. Mainly because you have a couple more stars you have to try. You only have one more star here. You're going to have to start doing uh, Bowser Red Points. But there are very few tricks to doing this level normally. Just, you know, work on your movement. Practice pr practice the level. Don't do what I do. There's a hidden Goomba down there. You know, it's very, it's very difficult to try and explain your thought process while you're uh, doing something. So, oh yeah, that's that's why people at GDQ have, uh, you know, co commentators. Yeah. So what you're gonna want to do with this ramp here is you can either set up a triple jump, which you can do by doing the first two jumps beforehand and getting the third jump on the ramp. Or, if that's a little bit too difficult for you because of the timing, you can set up what's known as a silly kick. So, if you hold the jump button and then start to mash kick, and then hold forward, you can just keep pressing the kick button. You don't have to mash it super hard, you can just press it at, like every once in a while and make it all the way up the ramp with those kicks. Alright, I gotta pop off, I'm at home. Alright, see you later. This, uh, as this is a beginner tutorial, I will not be showing off eight red coins, even though it's a trick that I normally, it's, it's a star that I normally go for now. Just because I think that eight reds are not something you should try and learn if you're first getting into Mario 64 16 star. Bowser is a very easy boss. You just kind of grab him and throw him. If you miss, it's okay. Just grab him and throw him. I can just can't hear you. It's not that big of a miss. Unless yeah. you throw him off. You don't lose that much time. Yeah, you really don't lose that much time from just missing Bowser a couple times early on. And hey, every time you miss Bowser, that's time saved for the future. That may not help this run, but the runs in the future, they're gonna love it. Absolutely. I know that you've been getting better at them. I have been getting a little bit better at my Bowser throws as I've played a little bit more. And so next next up, we've got the last eight stars, and then we're gonna be doing downstairs. So downstairs is pretty easy, I would say. A lot of uh, the more simple stars in the game are here. So we're going to get the more difficult ones out of the way first with, shift, with uh, Shifting Sandland. Then we're going to go in a straight line through all of the basement. So to set up Boing, you're going to want to slide on both of these pyramids. Then do a couple rollouts. Long jump from this pyramid. And then I held backwards because I didn't think the Shy Guy would be in position, but he was. So I had no faith. But that's okay, because now we've got backups. Long jump from this pyramid over here, and then we can silly kick. Oh, silly kick. Here. You gotta jump neutral. Jump neutral, get your silly kick. Then you can come around and grab a star. Here we go. You could just triple jump like I do. But you I could triple also. jump, but it's a lot easier if you t if you uh, get to the other side first by taking the box. 
there are a lot of ways to do these stars, but whichever way you find most comfortable is the way to do them first. I'll be attempting boing again. I got a good boing. Hit the hit klepto. And then this lines you up perfectly to slide down. Make sure you jumped and not hit the quicksand. You can do a little side flip between this and grab the star. Here we go! And with that, we are done with shifting sand land, and that is basically every difficult star in the game. Where are we going to get six more stars, you might be wondering? Well, we'll be getting exactly one of them from uh, Lethal Lava Link. The easiest star in the whole game. Yeah, this is the easiest star in the whole game. TM. You just jump and dive on the 8th coin, and then you grab the star. Here we go! That was a little break to do that dive. The dive is very free. As long as you're holding your stick towards the star, the dive will never miss because of the giant hitbox of the stars. Now, as soon as you get here, dive right on in. There is a toad that has a free star right outside HMC. If we are not grabbing Bowser Reds, it's a little faster to uh, grab the toad star later. So the first star I do here is watch for Rowan Rocks, which is this star. That rock came through. It did. Do a double jump, hit a wall kick, and then you immediately grab the star. Here we go! You can also side flip. As long as you wall kick, the star will basically just always need to be there. So, whichever way you find getting up there is the easiest, all you gotta do is walk past the rocks. Then we're gonna talk to the toad, get a little two tap toad, accidentally decked him in the face. That's okay, that happens. You must have 12 stars before you can talk to him. Here we go! Do you have to have 12 stars before you talk to Toad? Yeah, I tried talking to him when I had 11 and he did tell me shit. Actually, no, he wasn't even there. Interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, well, that's why you skip him then. Alright, so... So next up, we're going to be going for Elevator Clip, which is pretty simple. You want to run and bonk your face against this wall, then push against the wall right here. If you miss it, it's okay. Just jump back on the elevator. What you're trying to do is just kind of like hug the wall. And then if everything is lined up properly with the corner of the elevator, you will be pushed straight through and you can land and fall right onto the Dory Star. There are a few other ways to get down to the stars, such as triple jumping off of the yellow box. But this is this is the way that I th that I normally find the most consistent. Of course, because it's on camera, I'm messing it up a bunch. But believe me, this is this is a very very easy star, and there is definitely more in depth tutorials about this elsewhere. I think I'm just getting the wrong pushing animation because I gotta have like yeah, I gotta get like the shimmy. I think. Well, I think you have to be in the corner. I normally just stand right in the middle. Oh, okay. Wow! I'm all oh, five. Alright, so we can. Is that even possible? I don't know. Just anyway, get on door. Yeah, I missed. That's okay. I missed the star, so the easiest backup here is just finding Dory. The door is a little jank, but... What, what are you doing? Why are you going for that? There we go. Then Dory, Dory goes wherever your camera goes, so just point towards the star, and then you will grab it. Here we go! Now there's just one more star, and then the worst clip in the game. Yeah. No. That was a little scuffed. But that's okay. Not everything will be perfect. Oh, another really easy star. It's just another wall kick. Yeah, one more, one more wall kick and a long jump, basically. So you're gonna wanna my game lag a little bit. You're gonna wanna long jump right here. Come to this part of the map and perform a wall. A, uh, that's crazy. That's <laughs> that's crazy. You're gonna perform a wall kick right here, and you'll clip through the red gate, and then you just long jump to the star. Don't do what I do there. That was ridiculous. I don't even know how you whiff that. I don't either. 
Alright, well, we got 15 stars now. Which means that Mips has spawned. You're always going to want to come around this way to get to Mips. That way you can hold the left and prevent Mips from uh, taking a right. Oh, oh man. Um, yeah, Mips being over here is never fun. It's okay, just... If Mips gets into this corner, then Mips will always do the same thing, so you can just dive across the middle, kind of diagonal right. So while you're sliding forward, you can still catch Mips. So if you know where to go, just dive in that direction, he'll just go right to your hands. So the way that I will do Mips Clip is very different from how you'll see quite a few other people do it. I, I also think this is just the simplest way to do it. All you have to do is line up Mips with the door, kind of in the middle, and just smash your face into the door. And if Mips is there, Mips will just end up inside the door. You can punch towards the door, and then Mips will come right out. Then you're going to want to line Mips up with the corner of the six of the 30-star door. And you just drop Mips, and Mario gets pushed all the way through. Mips Clip is very, very simple. There is a, a faster way to do it, which is the way that other runners will, which is not slamming your face into the door, because it's more consistent. But the way that I do it is by far the easiest, because as a... And it's just... If you fail it, you can just try again. It's not a complicated setup. You don't have to wait for the door cutscene. For a beginner, I just think it's a much easier thing to learn. Yeah, you're gonna get your uh, Michael Phelps athletic swimming practice in. A bunch of well-timed A presses to do uh, perfect swims. You, if you do it, most of your swims correctly, you will not have to surface for air. But if things start to go awry, just surface for air. It's okay. Grab some coins. And try not to do this kind of swimming. This swimming is very, very slow. Just perfectly time your heat press and you'll be in there and do it. Hop up onto the wing of the submarine, which is a little bit easier said than done. The further away you are from it, the easier it'll be for Mario to jump onto it. Now, there's a couple ways to get across the submarine. You can either jump, you, you can either jump and silly kick your way up, or you can do a, uh, you can do that, which is a side flip and then do a jump dive. I think the jump dive is easier, but it's, well, I think the jump dive is a lot faster and you get very much, uh, a lot further, but the silly kicks are very consistent and they're a lot slower. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't have to press B nearly as many times. Then we're heading to Bowser in the Fire Sea. This level has a lot of intricate setups you can do for the beginning, but I hit the B a little bit too early, so I can't really show any of them off. But all you're gonna wanna do is make sure you get to this part of the level, touch the heart, and then hit the fire. You can then turn around and land on one of these platforms. Grab the pole, Mario's back will immediately face where he's supposed to go, and then you can uh, wall kick up this area here, but always make sure to use R to reset your camera once you're out. Once you reach this bit here, if you miss the jump to land on top of the gate, you can side flip over it. And your goal will eventually be to get here by the when this is going up. So try and get here on the very first cycle possible. As your movement gets better and you get more used to the game, it'll come naturally. Now, I did just kind of get very unlucky there, <laughs> but I did also go for something. I kind of autopiloted from my regular strategies, so I'll be uh, showing you instead what you should be doing when first starting to practice. When you're first doing Bowser 2 and trying to do it quickly, you will take a lot of damage on this level, so take the heart and then long jump. You can skip this entire section and you'll end up right here on the falling bridge. Just hold forward and have no fear, and you can jump straight in. 
Bowser 2 is a pretty simple boss fight. Not too much to worry about, just run straight away from him, and then before you start to slide, turn forward so you get a butt slide. That way you can jump and kick. And then you can just run punch a couple of times before Bowser's uh, completely done. And you'll always grab him, and just the bomb's right there. Alright. We are well past the halfway point now. We are going into the final third of the run. Since we cannot go back out the way we came, you must go into Bowser and then hit exit course by pressing your pause button and then just hit my way down once. Open up this door. Now there is a clip you can do by double jumping and wall grabbing, or er, grabbing right here. You can uh, just run straight backwards then and grab the door. If you miss that clip, then you just run up the stairs. It's really not that big of a time loss. Now you're gonna go into Mario camera, turn to have Mario's facing you, and then you're gonna want to long, then this is where the backwards long jump start. You're going to want to long jump towards the camera by getting a little bit of a running start, Hold, yeah, press down on the camera too, you don't want to be in Psycho Camera. Just hold towards the staircase and start mashing the A button. And we're through. You don't have to mash too hard, it's more of getting the rhythm down. And I, I promise you BLGs are, see, are, BLJs are easier than they see. Now there is something funky that can happen here. So with this staircase, try and not hug the left wall. If you hug the left wall, you can sometimes be sent into wet dry world, which will just kind of kill the run, even if you're at like, even if you're a newer runner, there's not much you can do about that besides like reset the console, which is just a hassle. So make sure that whenever you start to BLG, which sometimes it can take a little bit to grab, if you're not quite grabbing, you're not comfortable with where you're at, you may want to just reset, like reset your position. And there we go. Yeah, to explain BLJs a little bit more in depth now that they're done, all you really have to do is long jump towards the camera, hold up towards where you're trying to go, which is up the staircase, and then keep pressing the jump button. If you feel or see Mario grab onto the ledge, like grab onto one of the stairs, and then perform another long jump, that's when you start to get your mash going. You don't really have to mash until Mario is like on the way down, because otherwise you're just going to wire out your thumb. There's a lot of technique and finesse you'll start to learn with backwards long jumps as you get better at doing them. But they are a little bit on the trickier side when you are starting to learn. I don't like that Google. <laughs> that's what you get for punching the Google. That that's crazy. I've, that's never happened before. That's never happened before. He jumped off the piranha. Guy. He got ghosted by a new one. So as soon as you get to this rotating platform here, just do immediately do a backflip at the peak of it. You'll get, you'll end up right here. If you want to do a single jump, double jump, then triple jump to get up this, then jump dive right at the top to guarantee your safety. It is much easier than it seems. Right at this lip, you're gonna to want to long, do a kind of like faithful long jump over to this part. Then you'll slide right off and land on this uh, on this arrow platform. As you get better, you'll start to be able to avoid this auto-scroller section and just do some serious platforming across this bit. So while we're not, while we're using this platform, we can perform a double jump here and just do nothing with it. Anyway, if you land your triple jump off of that third wooden block, you can immediately do a dive like we were doing in Womp's Fortress, and you can land on this middle pole here to skip that whole pole segment I just went through. Yeah. 
surprised you made the jump with that angle. If you do it too much, you'll start pushing your back. Yeah, it's easier just to walk through the wind there. Just try and hold forward. No need to get fancy. Now Bowser 3 is a bit of a little bitch. That's not good. I am very bad at my Bowser throws. Notoriously so. Before he's able to react, you can always grab Bowser and grab his tail. You know, if that bomb was there, that was crazy. If <laughs> the bomb was there, it usually was kind of I thought you overshot that one for a second. Alright, that's all three Bowser throws. And while this was a extremely slow run by my standards, with lots of errors and lots of mistakes, getting yourself a... I actually don't even know if I'm going to be able to split, but let's just call it a 34-12. Nope, I can't split. So getting, getting yourself a 34-12 on your first run... That would be very big. That's a great first time. So use this video as a comparison video to show what kind of... Use this, you know, as a good metric. As a good, like, baton pass, per se. Like, go and attempt a 16-star run right now with the knowledge you currently have. Try and use as many setups and as many... As as good movement as you can muster and see what time you end up with. If it ends up being longer than this run, don't feel bad. That's pretty normal. And everyone's, everyone that I know, their first run was within the one hour ballpark. Either slightly sub hour or slightly longer than sub hour. Some were like an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes. Your first run's never gonna, you know, knock it out of the park. Your first run, your first... Your first couple of runs, you might be a little disappointed by your time. But hey, who knows? Every time that you play the game, you grow. Every time that you attempt 16 star, you got something new to show for it. So just get out there and play some Mario. If you thought this video was helpful at all, then... Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming to the video. If you got here from the original video, be sure to leave a comment about anything you have more questions about. I'll try and respond to everybody that comments. You know, Mario 64 is a great game. 16 Star is a fantastic run, and there are so many ways that this run can be expanded. This route is perfect for someone who's just trying to learn the game, who's just starting out. I know that this run had lots of mistakes. Like, tons of them. I died multiple times. I, f I messed up almost every major trick in the game. Almost everything that could have went wrong, did. And I was still... It was still a pretty competitive time, all things considered. It's not its not like blowing anyone's socks off, but that's a good run. So if you, if you think you can do better and you've never played Mario 64, I implore you to give it a try. Get out there, play some Mario, use this run as a benchmark. Once you beat this time, let me know. I would love to see anybody who saw this video who had never played Mario 64 before learn from this video and try to beat me. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So if, if you wanna if you wanna just let me know what your time was, let me know if this video helped. Thank you. Please subscribe to this channel for maybe some more speedrun tutorials in the future in this kind of style. And subscribe to the Wither Report for more video essays on random shit that might not all probably won't normally be about speedrunning.